All right, eighth grade, welcome. Ms. Wynette here to go over some language that we're going to be using in the next couple of lessons and, and beyond. So let's talk math. Let's get started. First word that comes up, whole number, you're probably familiar with this. Let's dive a little bit more into it. A whole number is any of the numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. That is not a fraction, not a decimal, and not a negative. So 0 to infinity, all positive numbers. That is a whole number. What is an integer? An integer is a number with no fractional parts, no decimals, but it can be a negative. So it's all the numbers on the number line that are positive and negative. However, no fractions, no parts of a number, no decimals. All right, let's keep going. What's the power of a number? The power of a number or exponent of a number says how many times to use a base number in a multiplication. So the power of a number, we can see this diagram, tells us how many times to multiply 8. And we see 8 to the power of 2, we multiply 8 twice. So the power of a number tells us how many times to use a base number in multiplication. Base number, well, we just looked at a base number. A base number is the number that gets multiplied when using an exponent. So here's our diagram again. We've got our base number eight. We've got our exponent or power to the to eight to the second power. So we know we're going to multiply eight twice. Use that number twice, eight times eight. We've got it two times. So our base number is eight. It's the number we are actually going to be multiplying. Exponent, we've looked at that a couple of times. Let's look at it again. The exponent of a number says how many times to use the base number in a multiplication. Again, it's written as a small number to the right and above the base number. Again, it's also known as the power and we can see here it's also known as the index, but we're not going to go into that. Just the power or the exponent. We can see that. Exponential notation. So what is exponential notation? Well, exponential notation is a shorter way to write repeated multiplication. For example, 2 to the fourth power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Whew, that's a lot. But 2 to the 4th power is much easier to say. 2 is used as a factor 4 times. So the exponential notation is another way to write 4 times 4 times 4. We see 4 to the 3rd power. It's a, it's a quicker way. It's a shorter way to write multiplication. Square numbers. Sure, you've seen this before. A square number is the number we get after multiplying an integer by itself. So integers are positive and negative numbers. We see four is our integer, and it's multiplied by itself. Four times four. And we can see kind of why it's called a square. If if you have four rows and four columns it makes a perfect square, four on each side. So, hence the, the, the term square, four times four. It's what we get when we multiply an integer by itself. Cube. We all have seen a cube before. Cube number is a number raised to the third power. The result of multiplying a whole number by itself twice. So 
three to the third power, three times three times three. Our integer or whole number in this case is three and it's multiplied by itself t two more times. But all in all, it's multiplied three, three times three times three. A number raised to the third power is cube. Expanded form. Remember expanded form with addition? Expanded form is a way to look more closely at a number to find out what each digit is worth and then write it as an addition sentence. We are going to be working with expanded form, not necessarily in this way, but remember, we're going to be adding things together. Equivalent fractions. What does this mean, equivalent fractions? Equivalent fractions are fractions which have the same value, even though they may look different. So here we have an example of a half of a pizza and two quarters of a pizza. They take up the same amount of space on the pizza, but one is written as one half and the other is written as two fourths, right? In this picture, we just cut the pizza into two pieces, two sections. In the other, we cut it into four. So they mean the same thing, but they're written and look differently. Order of magnitude. Order of magnitude is a size of value by approximate factors of 10. And we'll get into this a little bit more later on in later lessons. So it's a size of the value by approximate factors of 10. For example, the order of magnitude of 12 is one because it's close to 10 in size. The order of magnitude of 170 is two because it's close to 100. I mean, it's closer to 100 than 12 is, right? And a thousand meters is an order of magnitude of three because it's three orders of magnitude greater than a meter. If a meter is one, a thousand is three zeros. So three orders of magnitude. And we can see there is kind of a choice. Now we're gonna get more into this later. But these are some of the words that we're going to be encountering in the next several lessons.